Hi everyone. Um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on um, what time you access this video. So this will be our first um, online lecture. Uh, so I hope that before anything else, I hope that all of you are in 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 good health. All of you are doing fine. Um, remember that your first and foremost. Um, Priority right now should be your health and and your um, wellness and your uh, family. Okay, um, today uh, we will be talking about our second poem. Um, remember that our last discussion uh, before this pandemic happened was on on love, right? Um, we talked about. Uh, the Autumn Sonnet by May Sarton, and we tried to weave in uh, the lecture with um, the, 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 the song um, Dina Muli. And our conclusion then was if all kinds of love would eventually end with, with um, sacrifice or is always already uh, asymptomatic of sacrifice um, should all love end um, tragically. <clears throat> so, our next poem uh, that we will be discussing right now, we will try to contrast what kind of love then uh, could be an iteration of that first type of love that we have been um, talking about. But before that, um, let me introduce to you um, our guest, uh, our guest student for this afternoon, for this lecture, um, because I don't want it to be too formal, you know, um, our, our, our uh, concentration and our focus right now has been so uh, uh, divided. So let's make it, you know, light, just like our classroom sessions. I want to introduce your new classmate, Bulbasaur. Yeah, so he will be sitting in for our class this afternoon. Okay. Um, so I was, uh, I was able to post in our groups um, a short poem by Merle Alunan. Uh, this is entitled, We Kept a Jar Full of Keys. And I hope that you were able to uh, run through uh, the poem before, uh, before discussing. No? <clears throat> First and foremost, let us uh, read all together um, the poem. We kept a jar full of keys on a forgotten shelf in the house. What doors they opened or what they kept forever locked. Before they came by accident or chance into our little jar, we never learned. Let them stay there, you said. Your eyes on mine saying, take all I have. Since I had let you in to share my little feast and you'd not wish to leave, I nodded. Yes. There, let them stay. We hadn't reckoned how the years would wear love thin. And now your pained eyes search my face for all I shouldn't have taken. And I, I ache for all I should have kept. We hammer the doors of silence, bruising with words we could not speak. How did we ever think we had no need of keys? Okay, so again, um, just like uh, the last poem that we discussed, it's it's quite accessible in a sense that it did not need um, um, highfalutin words or complicated words. Uh, the images were clear. So um, to access the poem then becomes um, simple. And yet, once you're able to close read and to analyze the poem, um, it presents or it opens up um, so many possibilities and iterations for you uh, to further analyze or to further um, uh, appreciate this this work. Okay, so let's try to uh, unpack it now. And and the first level we as we always do 
should be um, the literal. Let's try to take a look at, at, at the situation. Let's try to take a look at the images, the tensions that are present in uh, the poem. First line, okay? We kept a jar full of keys on a forgotten shelf in the house. So the image is very, um, it's very clear. You have that of, of um, a jar full of keys, uh, a shelf, and then the house. Of course, we know that it could um, be a, a symbol of something. But right now, let's try to read it in its, in its uh, simplest form. There's the image of a jar filled with keys right um and it is kept inside a forgotten shell within the house okay um what is interesting here is the term forgotten and here is um uh one of the limitations of the english language that we have been talking about for instance and i think uh, uh i was able to discuss this in our past lesson when we talk of forgotten in, in, in this context, we are not actually sure if the translation is either nakalimutan or kinalimutan, right? And uh, we have been discussing so far that the difference between the two is the intention, right? So when we're looking at or when we are looking into the shelf where the, this, this jar full of keys was, was kept, um we have no idea in terms of context if uh the intention was uh there or 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 not and um we say that to intentionally to intentionally forget something is quite impossible because that intentional forgetting uh, uh requires perpetual remembering right um so kinalimutan o nakalimutan, you have you have all these possibilities and iterations that could uh, um, very well be substantiated within um, the poem, right? What doors they opened or what they kept forever locked before they came by accident or chance into our little jar, we never learned. Now. Um, another another image, another interesting image that is presented to us is that of a door, right? And um, we have talked about the concept of, of liminal spaces, right? Liminal spaces as that which you are both inside and outside, you are both within and without, you are both, uh, um, in short, you are occupying a place that is in limbo a space or a situation that is in limbo. And for me, what is interesting about doors is that it is it is a, a, a prime example of, of, of a liminal space, right? You do not know if this door is, is it inside or is it outside, right? It's an access, right? It is an access. But if the physicality of a door, you, you have no idea if it is both inside and outside or is it inside is it outside or is it both right but also you have to figure out the function um a door can be used two ways for instance um to lock yourself in right or or just like walls right just like walls um is the function to lock yourself in or to lock others out right um uh, especially right now in, in this in this day and age of, of quarantine of, of lockdowns right um, we are both protecting right protecting what is inside from the outside but at the same time come to think of it um, uh, with with the mass exodus that has happened uh, just um, a few days ago when when most people from the metro, went outside to actually go home to the province, um, uh, there is this kind of, of um, insecurity in terms of what if they have uh, uh, the virus and they went out, right? So that kind of, of the politics of, of protection, right? Um, so 
we're talking about the doors in this specific line, what doors they opened or what they kept forever locked. We are actually looking into, um, did they really keep uh, um, the keys? Did they really keep the keys in order to not open, right? To not open those doors, those passageways, or um, did they stop things coming out of, of, of coming out from those doors, right? So, so the purpose is actually um, to ways, right? Um, so the function of the keys now become problematic in a sense that um, what is the purpose of these keys when they were put inside this jar? right uh the image the imagery and the movement of the images are very clear in a sense that uh we can follow the trajectory of what is happening and then um the second part of the first stanza has something to do with a conversation with a dialogue so if we can assume that this is a dialogue and a conversation between the lover and the beloved then what are they trying to say? So there is a conversation. Let them stay there, okay? says one persona. Let them stay there, you said, your eyes on mine saying, take all I have, right? So if I have these keys, I am giving you, uh, I am giving you the right to actually do whatever is necessary uh, uh, with these keys. Um, and since I had let you in to share my little feast and you'd not wish to leave, I nodded. So there is that nodding. There is that agreement. There is that agreement that yes, there, let them stay. So if we are looking at the lover and the beloved, of course, these are all just assumptions, they were both in agreement that the keys should stay there right um so we're clear about that we're clear about we're, we're clear about um the tension right the tension that was settled in the first part or the first stanza because it's, it ended with an agreement okay now next stanza the next stanza uh actually reveals a very heavy, a heavy turn or a heavy volta that that, uh, that gives us a shift of what is going on, the, the dramatic narrative in the poem. We hadn't reckoned how the years would wear love thin. Um, just like the first poem that we have discussed, I think this has gravity this has um quite a bearing <clears throat> it gives us that first conflict right we hadn't realized how the years would wear love thin we always we always think about how in a relationship for instance the years will um make any kind of relationship stronger or, or more established or grounded, the foundation, right, is always time. But here, um, it, it, it gives us a different rendering of time. Like, even if they have been together for, for X number of years, um, it gives us a different perspective. It gives us a different lens of how time, of how the years actually um affected their kind of relationship. How the years would wear love thin. Diba? Parang ang sakit dahil uh, itong oras na pinagsasamahan natin. Uh, hindi pala tumitibay ang relasyon. Hindi tumitibay, ngunit nagiging marupok. Nagiging manipis ang relasyon. And now your pained eyes search my face 
for all I shouldn't have taken. So what are we talking about in this line? We are actually talking about the conversation that happened in the first uh, that happened in the first uh, stanza by the end of the first stanza because what happened in the first stanza is remember that there was an agreement. There was an agreement that yes, we have these keys um but we have decided and we have agreed upon that uh we're going to keep them i agreed i nodded so um it's not your fault it's not my fault we agreed on it and now my your pained eyes search my face for all i shouldn't have taken and what we are talking about here in the things that i shouldn't have taken would be the keys right na parang sana hindi ko na lang kinuha itong mga susing ito Hindi ko na lang kinuha mga susing ito. And I, I ache for all I should have kept. That instead of putting it in that jar full of keys, in that jar, I should have kept the keys. I should have kept the keys. I should have found out or or I should have discovered what doors they open or what doors they lock because it would um, let me discover something. Um... So there was there's a sense of regret. At this point, at this point in the poem, you know that there is regret. You know that um in hindsight, they would be thinking, "Huh, yes, I know that we agreed upon something like this, but also uh there is that pain in terms of, hmm, I think we shouldn't have done it. I think we shouldn't have agreed to just put everything aside, to just keep everything in this in this jar, right? We hammer the doors of silence, bruising with words we could not speak. Now it becomes not just visual, but but it becomes auditory. Can you can you um imagine that you are you are you are hammering, you are you are you are banging on something and no matter how hard no matter how hard you bang on it no matter how hard you you hammer these doors so there is that pattern it's 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 still talking about that doors that is that, that they have kept locked because the keys are already uh on a forgotten place or in a forgotten space so even though they have been hammering the doors in order for them to be uh to be open in order for these 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 uh, passageways to open something, um, it's 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 already too late, right? There is silence. No matter how much effort you put into banging those doors, into hammering those doors, um, it's already too late. There there is no sound. There is no reverberation. That is uh, reacting or, or counter uh, counteracting that 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 um, uh, that action of yours, bruising with words we could not speak. Nawalan na ng bigat, nawalan ng saisay itong mga salita na sanay na motawi noon. Nakaita ilang beses mong katukin, dambahin, bugbugin ang mga pintuan. Katahimikan. Isang nakakabinging katahimikan dahil ito ang katahimikan ng pagsisisi. Ito ang katahimikan na dapat ginawa ko noon. Ito ang mga katahimikan na dapat nagsalita ako noon. Pero ngayon, wala na. Na kahit ilang beses kong sabihin, ang mga kailangan kong sabihin, wala na itong bigat, wala na itong saysay, dahil huli na ang lahat. And the last line would go, How did we ever think we had no need of keys? So it went back. It went back to this simple image. It went back into this simple object that the lover and the beloved at the first stanza decided to agree upon to just keep or to forget in a in a, in a shelf inside the house and now the biggest question is oo nga bakit natin naisip na hindi natin kailangan ang mga susing iyon 
Um, we will not be discussing um, the interpretation or the symbolism of those keys because I want you to think about what are these keys? In the context of the poem, what could the keys mean, right? But one thing that I want you to look into um, this poem is how it does not force you to feel the pain, right? Um, hindi ito isang tula na namimilit o, o pinipilit sa iyo na masaktan ka. Isa itong tula na nagkukwento. Isa itong tula na nagsasabi kung ano ang nangyari. Because it's it's almost journalistic in a sense that my, my, my imagery is that of two lovers, two past lovers, being inside a room, talking about what happened. Um, it is not romanticist. It is not idealist because if it is idealist, then um, you would think that, oh, okay, now that they realized uh, what happened, they can patch things up, they can... Uh, they can work on the relationship, but for me, it's 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 already done deal. It's it's already it's already done. It's already finished. Um, the ship has sailed, right? And this this poem was created maybe years or decades after, and just sharing that yeah, this is what happened during our relationship during that time and. I, I, I'm living my own life now. Um, the other party, the other person is also living uh, his life now. But yes, this is what happened to us. And um, that, that restraint, that subtlety of, of, of craftsmanship in terms of the poetics in this poem is the reason why um, I like it as as an example. Um, so there, uh, after having discussed uh, two poems already, I hope that you get to feel, okay? You get to somehow recognize the nuisance of um, what is a poem? How should the poem function? Uh, how should the poem um, make me feel, right? Um, and with that, um, I leave you with something uh, to think about. Um, what are these keys uh, that the persona is talking about? And uh, that would be the content of your um, paper. That will be due um, within the week. Okay? So, um, I will be leaving instructions uh, after this. Uh, please follow. Please follow the instructions. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, um, please uh, comment after my posting. Okay? So, thank you, Balbasor. And thank you, everyone. I'll see you on our next session. Thank you.